You want to feel like you're on a roller coaster? Let's pull the power and stall this thing on purpose. Here's how to do a power off stall. Let go! Before we do a power off stall, you first must know two things. If you understand two whys, you can execute this maneuver. One, you want to understand why does an airplane even stall in the first place? And then number two, you want to understand why are you being asked to learn how to do a power off stall. So let's start with number one. Why does the aircraft stall? Let go! Boom! So check it. If you out here floating that thing, what's actually keeping you up in the air? The lift. Our boy Bernoulli and Newton already laid it down on what causes lift and the theories of lift in aviation. It's a beautiful thing, baby. We all know that air is coming over that wing and of course you have that relative wind. Relative wind which is always opposite of the flight path that's hitting the court line. The court line is simply just an imaginary line in between the leading edge of the wing and the trailing edge of the wing. So if you used to have like a nice little imaginary line there, that relative wind is coming in and it's hitting at a nice angle. That angle is known as the angle of attack. And that's what's keeping you elevated. That's what's keeping you going. And you can float around and do all your maneuvers and do everything that you're doing as long as that angle of attack is a beautiful thing. But if you ever pitch up so much or get into any kind of position where the angle of attack is starting to exceed itself to the point where that air is no longer flowing beautifully over those wings and it's also, it starts to become detached from the over the top of the wing to the point where the plane starts to buff it and then it stalls. So that's exactly what's happened. You've exceeded that beautiful angle of attack to the point where it's getting ready to start to stall and it starts to stall and then boom, it recovers from that stall. So all you're doing is just making sure that it recovers from this stall. That is the main thing of what's happening there and that's what you wanna learn how to do with this maneuver. That is why an airplane stalls. Boom, number two, let's always think about why you even asked to learn this in the first place. Just like you're being asked to learn slow flight because that's a maneuver that you're gonna use readily when it comes to landing an aircraft, you will also use the power off stall in a very similar situation. These are all maneuvers you're learning to prep you so you can be ready to land the aircraft and do your solos and have fun in the aircraft. Just think about when you're coming in for landing and you're pulling the power back and you're getting ready to land an aircraft and you're at a critical angle. Hopefully you continue to maintain that nice angle of attack all the way down to the ground. But if for any reason, maybe you're nervous, anxiety, anything like that, we're all a human, you can exceed that angle of attack and you can stall very low to the ground. This is why you're being asked to do this and learn this maneuver. So now you got your two whys. You know why an aircraft stalls in the first place and you know why you're being asked to learn something. Let's get into that thing. Boom! Before you do any flight maneuver, you want to make sure you always do a nice mental checklist and run through it. You want to do CAS. Let's cover it again. Clearing turns, altitude, safety area. Before any maneuver, make sure you always do this. Boom, you're clearing turns, you know why you're doing clearing turns. You can be setting up in this direction right here. You can see on the side of you and on this side of you and in front of you, but you can't see what's behind you. But if you do a nice 90 degree clearing turn, now you can see in that direction and then 90 degrees back. Nice, perfect, stay at the same altitude, you're ready to go, you wanna make sure the area around the aircraft is clear. So that's the, the C part of CAS, C-A-S. Then altitude, you always wanna make sure you do these at a nice high altitude. The greater you can get up, the better, because you may lose altitude, particularly with something like a stall. Because remember, you're leaning that thing back, lean back, hey, lean back, and you're allowing it to recover. So you wanna make sure that you at a nice altitude so it can recover, particularly while you're learning. So make sure you're at a nice altitude. Never start any kind of flight maneuver low. Always be high. Altitude is your lifeline. Then boom, safety area. You wanna make sure you're in a safe area, baby. You don't wanna be doing this and you got a mountainous area right here and you headed towards it. You wanna make sure, hey, this area that you're in right now is nice and clear. So cast before every maneuver, mental checklist, confirm with yourself, hey, I'm going clearing turns, altitude, safety. Let's get into that thing. Let go! Boom! To make things easy, just like when we talked about slow flight, if you can remember two primary things, then it help you get through the maneuver. The two primary things you want to remember in slow flight, again, that's a video on this channel. You can check that out. What them links be at at the end of the video, in the description, all that good stuff. The two things you want to remember on slow flight was what? You wanted to pitch, of course, for airspeed, and you want the power for altitude. That gets you through slow flight. If you know those two things, that can get you through the maneuver. Two things you wanna remember when it comes to a power off stall is there are three stages of a stall. That's number one. And number two, it recovers itself. Just like I, it flies itself, it recovers itself. 
So we're going to go over those three stages in the whole setup and how you can remember those two things. There are three stages to a stall and that it recovers itself. You can get through this power all stall stage. Let go. Boom. So the setup for this is going to be very similar to slow flight. If you know how to set up for slow flight, you know how to set up for a power off stall. So you cruising along, you've done your cast already, baby. Clearing turns, altitude, safety. You're ready to run that thing. Car heat, what you going to do? You know you're going to pull that. Hey, power. You're going to bring that thing back. You know, bring, bring it back just a little bit at first. Not all the way power off just yet. You want to bring it back, start your pitch so you can get into the white arc. Once you get into the white arc, you gradually begin to bring out those flaps until you bring them all out. And when you bring out the flaps, anticipate what the flap is going to do to the aircraft. Anticipate that little uh, uh, movement with the flaps and make sure it doesn't happen. And you're nice and smooth, you know what I'm saying? Keeping everything on the controls, everything nice and smooth. Now you have all your flaps out and you're in that nice pitched attitude. Then, at this moment, heading is maintained, everything is good. Woo! Let's go on this roller coaster, baby. Then, you can start to pull the power all the way out as you begin to pitch the aircraft up, maintaining the heading. Here's the key here. You really want to be on your rudder pedals. You want to be on your rudder pedals in a major kind of way. And here's the reason why. You got multiple things transpiring right now. Remember the four left turning tendencies that are happening with an aircraft. All of that is going to be at play right now, which is why you have to stay on those rudder pedals. Just think about this. You got the P factor popping off, right? We talked about when the relative wind is hitting the propeller and it's going from a different angle. It causes the plane to want to turn to the left. You also just removed all the power. So that also impacts the aircraft wanting to turn as well. So the basic thing that's gonna make the stall very nice and smooth for you when you execute a power off stall, you wanna go up straight and you wanna come down straight. You wanna go up straight and you wanna come down straight. You don't wanna go up at an angle because when you start going up at angles and everything like that, that can easily get you to go into a spin, whether you go left or right. So you wanna stay on heading. The only thing that's gonna get you to do that Staying on those rudder pedals, dancing on those rudder pedals like you're doing the merengue. Straight back, straight down. So that's number one. Just making sure you're staying on those rudder pedals because you got all kind of things at impacted here, particularly you exceeding the angle of attack. You got your P factor going on. You that torque effect, you've removed that power from there. So now it wants to go chipped off in another direction. Stay on those rudder pedals to make sure you keep the aircraft straight. That's number one. So as you continue to go back and as you continue to pull back and pull back and pull back, you're going to get into stage one. We talked about how there are three stages of a stall. Stage one is going to be, you're just going to hear the stall warning horn. The plane has not stalled yet. It's exactly what it says. The stall warning horn. Horn. It's just letting you know that a stall is imminent if you continue in this in this rock. But what you want to do here is you want to acknowledge the stall warning horn and just say it to say it out loud. Say it to yourself. Stall warning horn. When you acknowledge that, it shows that situational awareness. You understand what's going on. You understand it has a stall yet. But of course, a stall is present if you continue at this rate. So you can continue to pull that thing back, staying on those rudder pedals. And also, too, as the aircraft is going back. Continue to look outside. You can remember that sight picture you have outside because you can tell if the aircraft is leaning to the left, leaning to the right, and you want to keep it straight. So make sure you're paying attention to that as you're going back and back and back and back in the aircraft. Then the second stage is you're going to get some buffeting. That's when the aircraft is going to start to rock back and forth. Hey, and why does it do that? It's because the wind that's coming over the wings that was going nice and smoothly is starting to lose contact with the wing. That relative wind is starting to lose contact with the wing. And when it loses contact with the wing, the aircraft is gonna to start to like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. But at this point, at this moment, it still hasn't stalled yet. It's just the second stage. Then you keep going back a little bit even further, and then it's gonna come down and stall. It's gonna break and it's just gonna come down and stall. And the reason why it's gonna come down and recover on its own, and this is why I like to say it recovers itself. It's because the weight of the aircraft, particularly in a single engine plane, the weight is here at the nose of the aircraft. This is where all the weight is. So if it goes back, it goes back, it goes back, it goes back, and then it just loses its contact with that wind altogether and it stalls, it's just going to go down. All you need to do is make sure it comes back down straight. Don't turn to the left or the right. And that the fact that it just doesn't nose dive down, but it comes down back into straight level. That's your job. It recovers itself. You're just going to guide it 
and make sure you're doing it correctly. So go back, go back, go back, go back. Oh, it broke. Come down, stay right here, push your power in simultaneously while you're doing it. That's all you're doing. It's going back. I'm keeping it straight. I'm keeping it straight. I'm keeping it straight. I'm keeping it straight. Oh, it just broke. And boom. Make sure you're following those three stages. Hey, stall warning horn. Hey, bumping. And it broke. Power back in. Follow those three stages. Let it recover itself. You just got it and make sure it doesn't turn left or right. If you do those things, you'll be perfectly fine. So boom, check it. The recovery procedure from it. You know what it is. You just stall. You, of course, release that back pressure, push forward, let it come down straight and level, just like that. Simultaneously, while you put it in that power, pushing back in that car heat, let it establish a positive rate of climb and gradually bring your flaps back in. You've already at a nice straight and level flight. You're looking on the horizon, your power in and your car heat is in. You're good. You don't have to rush everything else let it establish that positive rate of climb because what it's doing is it the relative wind lost contact with the wing so when it comes back down it has to re-establish that contact so let it do that let it re-establish the contact get back with the lift and then you gradually bring them flash back in that thing baby and you're trucking right along nice and smooth there's no need to rush any of this no need to rush any of this. No need to feel like you need to be aggressive and jam down on it to kind of get it back down. Again, it's going to recover itself. You're just making sure it don't over tip and go nose down. You want to make sure it just, hey, it recovered itself and it's straight and level and I'm good. I release that back pressure. Grab, put this in, put this in. Hey, there's those flaps. Positive rate of climb. Blah, 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 blah. And you're good. Boom, for a final tip on recovery. Remember, again, this is why you always got to be dancing on the rotor pedals. You are doing a power off stall. So throughout the, the tail end of the process, you've had the power off and then you just jammed it back in. What do you think is gonna happen to the aircraft? Another left turning tendency, which is why your feet have to be on those rudder pedals and give you more of that right rudder. Cause that torque effect and everything that happens when you jam power in, you gotta be ready for that. So that's the main thing. You wanna stay on those rudder pedals as you're going back because you don't want it to turn and you got it, when, you, when it comes down and you jam the power back in, you gotta stay on those rudder pedals so it doesn't shift to the left. It's all about going, again, think about straight up, straight down. Straight up, straight down. And if you do that, you've executed a power off stall. Roller coaster, baby, let go. Remember, you're not being asked to learn a power off stall because this is something that you're gonna be doing every time you jump inside of an aircraft. But you need to know what it feels like and you need to know the various stages. Think about those three stages, stall warning horn, buffeting, and then the brake. You need to understand what it feels like so if it does happen, you can anticipate for ahead of time and be able to recover from it. Let's say you were coming down for a nice landing and you heard that stall warning horn, Fine, okay, cool. But then you got to the point where anxiety or something, you pull back a little bit too far, and then you had some buffeting in it, you need to know how to recover from that. Nose down, everything straight, and being able to take care of that. It's to kind of get you to see what it feels like. Because people can talk about this all they want, but unless you learn what it feels like for yourself and know how to recover, that's what give you the reassurance and the confidence that you need to be pilot in command. Don't forget to like this video, comment on this video, and share this video, and subscribe to this channel. I am Donovan Batiste. This is Leadership Mindset, a place where you can get free information for everything that you need to know to become a pilot. And if you're already a pilot, review a lot of the videos on this channel to stay current, to stay proficient, or just have all around fun, a fun place to learn. I am Donovan Batiste. Hey, this is Leadership Mindset. Let's ride that roller coaster. Let go.